All right, take two. It's BD. Today, I'm going to be probably doing the most important video to date on my channel, and that is explaining the average penis size and how we can interpret this data. So, let's just get into it. I am using a site called Calc SD to come to the size of my models, which are just pieces of paper. So, Calc SD is a meta analysis of numerous studies around the world dating back a hundred years with the Kinsey study, but I don't think he uses that because it might have been self reported. Anyway, brings me to my next point. The creator of this meta analysis essentially removed any bad data. So that would be any self reported surveys, such as the lifestyle condom survey, which is basically what we get the average is six from studies with unhealthy individuals. So if they were sufferers of ED, they are not going to be up to snuff for this average size research. So after he took the averages of the averages and found the standard deviations, which I will explain in a second, if you don't remember your high school statistics, he came to the average size of five and a half by 4.6 five and a half bone press. So that means to the insertion on the hip. Now, some of you don't like that because you can't see it. I hopefully can show you on camera that there is a line drawn to signify where the average fat pad would end. Yeah, you can see it there, perfect. So that's probably smaller than what you've heard, which is six to six and a half. That's bogus based off of self-reporting. And let's be honest, most guys exaggerate. You can ask some guys off the street how much they bench press, and they are going to say they bench 225 when 95% of men cannot bench 225. It may like seem like that because of selection bias, which I'll talk on at the end of this video, but let's continue explaining penis size. Five and a half inches average. The standard deviation which is a fancy way of saying the average distance from the, <laughs> sorry, my dog just walked by, the average distance from the average per specimen, which is a good way to calculate variance in a population, falls between the z-score of one, which is one standard deviation, and a z-score of negative one standard deviation. Since this is naturally occurring events, is going to match a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve. That means every event in biology, physics, chemistry, you name it, is going to follow this event pattern. And based off of that, we can take the standard deviation and figure out the percentile these characteristics events will be in. And I've heard people try to make the argument penis size follows a Gaussian. Uh, bell curve, I think, not bell curve, a Gaussian distribution, that's incorrect. It, it doesn't work that way. It, your entire body follows a natural bell curve per characteristic. Your penis is not special. So what's crazy about this is that 68% of men are going to be in this size range. Okay, so think about it. Seven out of every 10 you meet will be between here and here. That's the power of statistics and probability. So if you are in this range, you really have nothing to worry about. You measure up with the vast majority of men. And again, that is between 4.82 inches and 6.16. 67, 67 to 68% of men are gonna fit in this range. So let's talk about small first, because that's a little bit easier to dispel. Okay. So this is two Z scores, two negative Z scores away from the average. So that is 1.35 of the distance in inches. This would be the below average range if you fall between 4.8 inches long bone pressed and 4.1 inches long. That would be considered below average. Don't worry, there are other ways to make up for it. 
penis size actually does not matter that much in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, about 14% of the male population are going to be this big. So, like, it's not uncommon. Well, it is uncommon, but it's not, like, the end of the world to be this size, right? There's tons of guys this size. That is, like, a billion men off the top of my head that are that big. And then truly small, which would be between negative 3 z-score and negative 2 z-score, is... 2.5% of the population. That is 1 out of 50 men. Off the top of my head. A little bit more. 1 out of 40, right? Yeah. So 1 out of every 40 men are going to be this small. Or in this range. I'm not shaming them for being that size. They can't control it. There are other ways to make... To be considered masculine in this society. And honestly, you don't even need a big penis to be... Now, anything smaller than this is most likely to be the cause of unnatural factors, meaning it is not genetically predisposed. I would recommend if you are below three and a half inches that you go to an endocrinologist, make sure you do not have a stunted puberty and get the help you need if that is the case. Some of you guys may actually just have the quote unquote short end of the stick and that is nothing to be ashamed of. Real quick, let's just show you the bottom 50% out of the, what, 4 billion men in this world, 2 billion of them are going to be of this size. Okay, take it in, think about it. Okay, now let's talk about big. True average, end of average. Start of big. That is... 6.83 BPL, so to the hip. If you are talking in non-bone press length, that is just over six inches long. That does not sound huge, right? That's because it really isn't that big. So looking at how below average was about 14% of the male population, above average is only 14% of the population. So one out of every one and a half guys will be in this size range out of 10. It's still uncommon, but it's not unheard of. Um, and this is going to be basically the boyfriend dick range. That's big, but not unpleasantly so. The desired dick range. There's actually studies to back this up. I might link them at the bottom. I'll think about it. Or if I remember, I will. Average. End of average. Start of big. End of big. Start of huge. This would be seven and a half inches bone pressed. Uh, 6.675 non-bone pressed or exposed length, whatever you want to talk about. This range here is 2.5% of men. Okay. So, 2 out of every 3 guys out of 100 are going to be this long. Probably not what you were thinking. You were probably thinking 20% of men were this big. No. Not even close. This is it compared to the average. This is 3 standard deviations away. So that means that is about two and a quarter of an inch longer than the average male specimen. This is the start of the z-score of three. All right, one other point I forgot to mention is this would be the equivalent of being between 6'3 and 6'5, or 6'6. Six, six. So this is the equivalent of being 6'3, this is the equivalent of being 6'6. Six, six. You might think you see a lot of people that tall, but again, men lie about their height. And when you do see men that tall, they stick out like a sore thumb. And this is going off the United States average. If you're Swedish, it's probably a little taller. I digress. And height has very little correlation with penis size, by the way. So even if you are 6'6", don't expect to have a large penis to match. And I believe I misspoke. This is two out of every 1,000 men are this big. It is the 99.98 percentile. So, this is exceptional. It is unlikely that any of your previous partners had someone this big or bigger. So, we have the start of huge. This is something you could probably find in the streets if you looked for it. This is what I would consider safely huge. That is eight and a quarter inch bone press, or actually 8.14 of an inch bone press, but 
at that size is starting to get semantic. That is one out of every 2,500 men are longer than eight inches compared to the average. That's where it starts to really show. Not many men are going to be of that much size difference between each other. That is getting to the point of uncanny. And then finally, just to prove a point, this is where it gets unlikely to be naturally occurring at a z-score of five. This is 8.8, .8. that's not even nine inches. So out of four million men, one to be that size if it was a natural selected variable. Once you get beyond this size, I would argue that A, they are either enhanced in some form, such as penile traction therapy, use of penis pumps, or they had a very good bonk to the head when they were a child and that caused their pituitary gland to be out of whack for a bit, causing extreme penis growth during puberty. And there's other environmental factors that could cause this, but that's just the first thing that came to my head. Well, let me get these all laid out. Now I'm gonna take away the unlikely to be naturally occurring out. So this is the spectrum of man. You got your average, you got the 99.98 percentile, and you got the 0 .2, 0 0.02 percentile down here. The vast, vast majority of men are going to be in this size range. And even more so, right here is going to be the majority of men. Then you have your statistically significant size differences of 2.5%. So 2.5%, or technically it'd be 5% with both of them, but 2.5% going out. And then here and here is 0.2%, or is it 0.4? You get the point that as you get farther and farther away from the average, the extremities are much and more rare. Extremities, yes, extremities. The outliers become much more rare. So guys that are saying they are eight inches long are probably lying. Now, don't say that to their face unless you wanna start a fight or make them feel insecure. Let's be bigger than that. Let's try to keep our own minds in reality. So as I said, I laid all this out for you, but yet the average size on the internet is eight inches. Let's go over that. First, it's the internet. Most people lie, <laughs> right? Because there's no consequences for their lying. Second, porn is a huge factor in how you perceive yourself. If that's the only erect penis you ever see, you're constantly comparing yourself to it. Therefore, your average size is comparing yourself to guys that are probably about this big. All right, so of course you're going to think you're small if you're competing against the top 10%. That is not how reality works. Porn does not care about your mental health. They are trying to sell you a fantasy. Whatever issues you develop from it is not their problem. And then selection biased. First, guys that are big are more likely to show off and brag about it. That goes for guys with big muscles, girls with a big rack. They're gonna take more pictures of it, they're going to show more people and talk about it. Second, selection bias. Remember how I mentioned if you see someone that is 6'3", you notice them? It's the same idea with penis size. It is rare, therefore you notice it. And then finally, there's the concept of girl inches. Your girl probably has not been with a man that is over eight inches long. Females are 15% smaller than men on average, so assume they're going to overestimate by 15%. So that would be the difference between this guy and this guy. So above average is what? Like this is start of big. So start of that, or the end of the average range, 6.8, 7.5, just round up to eight, and that would be your girl inches. I hope this cleared up some size misconceptions for you, but I really want to make it a point that the size of your penis does not change your worth as a man. Your actions define you as a man. Be responsible, be kind, do what's right for others. Those are what make a man, not your genetic endowments. So. Hope you learned something. This is BD signing off.